This is a Be Kind to Pets educational video sponsored by Tupayo Vets on the anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry of what's in hamster's ears. One day, the owner of a 13-month-old male hamster came in after realizing the hamster is constantly scratching its ears. Upon closer examination, he realized there were warts in both ears. So what are warts? A wart is a small rough growth resembling a cauliflower on the skin, caused by viral infections due to the papilloma virus in the squamous epithelium. This often occurs in older hamsters. This is a normal squamous epithelium that makes up the epidermis. The papilloma virus infects the squamous epithelium of the skin through micro wounds and abrasions. During subsequent wound repair, Basal cells upregulate integrin, which interacts with the capsid protein found on the surface of the papilloma virus. This interaction promotes internalization of the virus. They replicate and have a rapid growth, which gradually pushes out against the epidermis. After time, it will form a cauliflower wart on the surface of the skin. For this case, this is happening in the ear canal of the hamster. So let's look at the anatomy and physiology of the hamster ear. The hamster ear consists of the outer ear, middle ear, and inner ear. The outer ear consists of the peanut and the ear canal. The ear canal has a vertical and horizontal portion and end at the eardrum. They are now obstructed by ear warts and debris. Moving on to the physiology. Because of the vertical then horizontal shape of the ear, infectious debris, wax, and warts have a harder time draining and cleaning. This affects the ventilation of the ear canal, which causes the hamster to itch. When the warts are not removed and start growing, the hamster will constantly scratch the wounds. This will introduce bacteria into the wound, and if a foreign body passes the first line of defense, the skin's immune system responds. The immune system produces cells like the Langerhans cells to fend off the foreign bodies. The dendritic Langerhans cells originate in the bone marrow, and they migrate to the epidermis where they form a regularly arranged network to fend off the foreign bodies. However, if the warts are left untreated, it can cause death in a small animal, thus it is better to remove the warts. So how do I solve the problem? The vet suggested to remove the entire ear so the wart will not grow again. However, the owner is not in favour of it, so the vet suggested a lateral ear canal resection instead. So what is a lateral ear canal resection? This is the vet's explanation to the owner. Cut the rectangular piece of the side wall so that it's exposed. So when a cut has shown by the red uh, rectangle. So this one is taken out. It's taken out. So when it's taken out, you can see that uh, a hole here. This hole is actually the opening of the horizontal canal. In this case, since the side wall is taken out, the vertical canal is exposed. And, and so in future, any warts uh, growing here can be easily removed, unlike Early on, where the warts are inside the canal and very difficult to assess, these are the actual warts. So after after removing the side wall, there is ventilation and drainage, and also in this case the hamster feels much better because uh, he keeps rubbing on the warts. There's uh, some sand bath, some sand from the sand bath might drop in also. It's very difficult for the hamster to, to uh, live a normal life. So in this case, this surgery, which is done in a dog, floppy ear dog, uh, with problems of uh, ear scratching and irritation, uh, is very effective as well because once you open up this uh, side wall by removing the cartilage, by, by, by cutting off using electricity, you cut it off and throw it away, this open vertical canal uh, permits drainage and uh, ventilation and uh, any dirt inside the horizontal canal we can use a forcep to take out the dirt as well and in most cases this surgery is very uh, effective and 
and successful. So for this semester, this lateral ear canal surgery, lateral ear canal resection, that's the name of the surgery has been done. Moving on to the surgical procedure. During the physical examination prior to surgery, the vet felt a lump on each side behind the ear. These are not abscess or tumors. They are cheek punches filled with seeds. Blood tests should be done prior to surgery to access the health of the animal. This can be easily done in dogs, but due to the small size of the hamster, it is impossible to collect sufficient blood for the test. And by the heartland of vet medicine, it is also not financially practical to do the blood test. Therefore, the blood test is not done. This is how the surgery is done. After surgery, post-operative nursing care is needed. To stop the bleeding, potassium permanganate powder is applied to both ears. It is important to ensure the cleanliness of the hamster's ear and make sure there is no bleeding. To clean up the ears, use a cotton bud soaked in diluted cohexidine and gently clean both ears. This may be stressful to the hamster, so do it for a minute or so. Let the hamster rest before repeating. Some owners may have a busy lifestyle and neglect post-operation nursing care. However, post-op care is very important and should not be neglected. In conclusion, this surgery is very rare in hamsters, but this hamster is recovering well from the surgery and is back to normal activity. From a follow-up, the owners are happy with the surgery.